Hey folks, Mike here from Germany. Um, today I want to give you a short review or uh, an introduction of my custom-made e-drum set. Uh, the reason for this video is because um, I realized a lot of you guys want to know uh, what I did um, to look at to have it to look like this. Uh, what I did with the conversion, um, the trigger technology, um, what heads I use, uh, and stuff like that, and what it, what this is all about. Because uh, I got a lot of compliments out there, and I really appreciate that. Uh, and I want to show you um, in detail uh, what I did with this kit, and then uh, I want to show you that it's not really expensive um, having a kit like this if you really want it. Um, and that it's not uh, even or sometimes even less expensive than buying a Roland V-Drum set, uh, a TD20 or TD30. So let's have a look um, at my kit. So this is my snare drum, uh, my beauty. It's a, as you see here, it's a common 14 by five and a half um, snare drum, um, 10 lugs on each side. Um, and all of the shells are pretty common. Uh, it's a basics custom, that's the name of the of the shell set. Um, when I started drumming about one and a half year ago, uh, when I restarted drumming um, uh, one and a half year ago, uh, I got a Roland TD12 uh, V drum set. Uh, I got it from uh, eBay in used condition. Um, the module, uh, the symbols that I use, um, the module is right here on my desk, uh, connecting my uh, MacBook and my interface. Um, it was a common Roland TD12 set with these little tiny um, uh, pads from Roland that you all know. But um, I soon realized, um, because I know what the guys from Jobiki or um, Drum Tech, German company Drum Tech, what they made, um, all these beautiful real size looking, uh, acoustic looking uh, e-drum sets. Um, and I realized that I, this was what I wanted. So um, I sold most of my Roland TD12 set, uh, except from the symbols you see here and the module. Um, and you can always sell them for really good prices um, because they are really, really um, demanded uh, in used condition. So I got this um, shell set. Um, it's a common um, birch shell set with a really, well, normal size. It's 14 by five and a half. 10 by 8, 12 by 9, and a 14 by 12 floor tom, and a 22 by 18 bass drum. This is a uh, common fusion size uh, drum set, uh, kind of entry level, um, with quality like, you know, all of the Pearl x -Works stuff, stuff like that. So a really, really solid um, drum set, especially for beginners. And this is the first advantage uh, that I wanted to show you, because um, if I want, I can always reconvert this one to a common acoustic shell set. Uh, just remove the heads, just remove the trigger inside because they do not damage the shell. Um, just get myself some Remo, Remo or um, uh, Evans heads and I can play this completely acoustic, acoustically. Um, so I have two drum kits in one, so to say. Okay, so now what I, did I do with my shells? Um, as you might see here, I have um, four tons because I Bought this one 16 by 14, my second floor tom, some weeks ago. Um, I was always looking uh, to find a matching finish, but finally I got it. Um, and the, the approach um, behind all this is nearly the same. Uh, this is my sweet little tiny 8 by 7 inch tom, which I haven't integrated into my drum set uh, just because I haven't enough uh, inputs on my module. Um, but maybe I will do uh, in the future. And as you see here, this sweet liney, tiny little trigger bar. Um, this is the technology behind every shell. As you might see here, I will hold this up. This is just connected with the lugs inside. Uh, so you don't have to damage uh, the shell. You can completely remove it and use it acoustically uh, again, as I said. Um, as a renew head, I use match heads too because of the, um, of the noise. Um, when I hit it, I will show you in a second how loud these shells are. Um, the company um, who did this trigger for me is uh, a German company called Ardrums. Uh, I will show the link uh, in the description. 
um, because uh, you know I was looking um, for companies who built Trigger for converting uh, acoustic drums to e-drums and there were a lot of uh, companies out there in the market. Um, as you might know, uh, there are Jobby Key, uh, Diamond Electronic Drums, Dave uh, from uh, Great Britain. We have Pintech uh, in the United States. Of course, Drumtech, German company, um, which are really expensive, um, unfortunately. But there are uh, some guys like um, my good friend Till um, from R Drums uh, building these triggers. Um, and this is really, really high quality, as you see here. It's solid, uh, it's well made, custom made for every shell. Um, and if you wanna convert your drums uh, to uh, electronic, um, the technical approach behind this is quite simple because you just need uh, some of this trigger piezos uh, right here. Um, but it's not that easy as it looks because um, especially when you are uh, using uh, virtual instruments like Stephen Slade or Superior Doma, uh, you need to have real accurate um, trigger uh, and MIDI responses when you play your drums. Uh, so you have to look at a decent quality um, the f of the foam right here, um, that it's not damaging after some hits. Um, so I'm really, really happy having these triggers. Uh, Till and his company really do an amazing job and I can highly recommend them. Um, when you think about uh, converting. But of course, you can also check out Jabberkey, Diamond Electronic Drums, Pintech, Drumtech. Um, there are a lot of companies out there. Just check out converting um, acoustic to electronic drums and you will have some results. What about the costs? Um, as I said in the beginning, this even this may look quite expensive, it's not. Um, when you see the Drumtech, uh, German company Drumtech, you see like seven, eight thousand uh, bucks for a complete drum set, but this is because you have to buy the rolling cymbals, which are hell of a expensive. Uh, the cymbals from Roland are really, really expensive, even in use condition. Uh, you have to buy a module because this is always the stuff that I already owned uh, when I got my uh, Roland TD12. So I just sold the the pads. Um, the shell set, um, the Birch custom. Um, shell set here, fusion sizes, entry level was about 300 bucks uh, for me, 300 euro of course. Um, so this wasn't quite really expensive. Um, the trigger bars uh, really depends on the sizes, but they have a range from about 90 to 120 bucks um, each. So um, if you just want to convert a five or six piece um, shell set, um, so it's about 700, 800 bucks uh, in total. Um, but as you might know, when you sell uh, or when you want to buy a Roland a, a V-Drum set, um, they are way more expensive. Uh, just pur purchasing the uh, PD-125, I guess, PD-128, uh, the newest one, they are really, really expensive. So converting a complete acoustic drum set uh, maybe will cost you about 1,000 bucks because you have to buy some mesh heads, of course. Um, concerning the, speaking of the mesh heads, um, you see here, for the snare I use a 3-ply mesh head from Jobbiki. Um, they sent me one to test it and they're really, really uh, gorgeous. Uh, nice looking, you can barely look down to see the trigger. Um, on the toms, um, I have Billy Blast from California, which I saw uh, on Luke Oswald. Uh, with this uh, amazing project drumangle.com. You should definitely check it out. If you haven't seen that, I will post the link in the description below. Uh, and on the bass drum, I have a 22-ply um, two mesh head uh, from German company Drumtech. So um, the mesh heads uh, depends on the quality and, and which, of, if you want to uh, have a 1-ply, 2-ply, 3-ply, but um, again, you will get them in use condition too um, if you're looking uh, on eBay and stuff. Um, so in total, uh, you maybe have to invest if you already own a custom set, uh, a common, sorry, a common shell set, uh, or you buy one uh, on, on eBay, um, you may have to invest about 1000 bucks. Um, but this is the price you will uh, probably get after selling your uh, Roland pads, because they are really, really expensive, um, as you might know. So. As I showed you here, 
um, it's not really, really expensive to have a gorgeous looking drum set. And I can tell you, uh, playing on real, real sizes, 10, 12 tom and 14, 16 and the 22 inch bass drum, um, this is, you know, as a drummer, uh, we always want to play a real acoustic drum set. But um, if we have to play on an electronic drum kit, which has its benefit and advantages, um, especially for playing at home, um, this is just what I wanted to do, uh, having real sizes so I can feel quite comfortable and, and yeah, relaxed when playing instead of these um, quite, you know, little tiny rolling pads. So what about the noise? Um, for all of you who have ever played an electronic drum uh, know that these they are not um, completely quiet. Um, but but it's okay, uh, they are not that loud that you cannot play them at home. And if I strike my snare drum, um, of course they will cause some noise, but it's quite okay. Uh, my family, uh, I doesn't bother, I do not bother them when I play. Of course, the cymbals are quite, you know, like this ugly rubber uh, feel, but as I said, it's quite okay for playing and practicing at home. And this is the real benefit uh, of e-drums in general. You can practice and play nearly at any time uh, if you want. So last but not least, my bass drum, which you cannot see right here. Maybe I will take some photos and show them um, inside this video uh, when I play my bass drum. Um, of course, it's not that loud um, uh, as an acoustic bass drum. But the feel is uh, what it's all about. It's uh, quite as cool to play this bass drum um, as playing an acoustic drum. The rebound, the feel um, of the pedal uh, and the beater hitting um, the mesh head. Um, the bass drum uh, trigger is from uh, Wonka drums, uh, from Jörg Wonka, um, German engineer, uh, who builds um, bass drum or triggers in general. Um, and I will post his link um, in the description too. Um, I have some photos, I will show them, I guess, right now when you're looking at the video. Um, it's quite solid. Um, you know, we Germans tend to over-engineer some things. Um, as you may see in my snare drum, um, it's a 10, 10 arm system. I don't see if you see it. Right here on every lug, there's an there's an arm uh, and the trigger um, right in the middle. So um, it's really, really uh, sensitive playing this one, especially using Superior Drama with all these tiny ghost notes you play. And it's really accurate. And I can highly recommend this one. Um, this is um, probably one of the best triggers out on the market you can get. So you have to check them out. Okay. Um, the rest of my setup, as you see here, is mainly Roland. Uh, this is the VH12. <clears throat> gorgeous uh, hi-hat um, mounted on a common uh, hi-hat stand. I have two uh, CY14 uh, crash cymbals from Roland, uh, the CY15R, a right cymbal from Roland, uh, and this one, um, the CY12, I guess, yes, um, as my third. Um, I have a CY8 uh, additionally, which I sometimes um, put up to this kit, depends on the song I want to play. And of course, as I said earlier, I have this little, little tiny 8 uh, inch tom. Uh, so maybe I was, uh, I'm looking for a for upgrading my module to a TDA20 or TDA30. Um, this has 15 inputs, uh, so I can um, easily uh, add some of uh, some new symbols and, and, and shells and toms and pads. So maybe I'm gonna, I'm going to upgrade this um, and as a last step um, there's just two things um, until I'm really done with my project um, I want to have a new finish uh, I'm looking for some cool finish uh, because this one is is okay for me but I don't like this orange sunrise fade uh, thing it's uh, it's okay for me but uh, it's not what I what I've been dreaming about uh, having a custom e drum set uh, and the last thing is that I want maybe I want to replace the Roland symbols with um, real symbols, real electric symbols. There are some manufacturers out there. Um, again, it's Jobiki doing some great stuff um, with their symbols. 
you can get cymbals from 12, 13 inch, I guess, to uh, a 20 inch ride. So um, this is probably the last, um, the final piece of converting or having a uh, real, real uh, drum kit um, with real sizes, um, but completely triggered and using uh, electronic drums. Um, as you see in my videos, um, as a last um, information for you, my setup, I play here, um, all the information, the MIDI information I play on this drum set uh, goes into my module, the Roland TD12. From there, um, I'm going into a Roland Quad Capture interface. Um, uh, and from there, uh, with a USB cable to my MacBook, uh, where I run Superior Drummer or Steven Slate drums. Um, and from there, I can you know manipulate uh, or um, choose the samples I want uh, for a certain song. Uh, so yeah, this is my setup. Uh, if you have further questions, uh, I will probably do some more of these videos. Uh, some in-depth um, tutorials um, where I show you my triggers and how they work and uh, which material they have. Um, we, if you have any questions regarding uh, mesh heads or trigger technology in general, um, please leave a comment below. Um, and yeah, I hope I see you soon with my next drum covers and have a nice day.